Welcome to West Kentucky Community and Technical College's Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Rhett McCarthy, and I want to cook with you. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy. And uh, we're going to be doing uh, sponge cake today, and not just any sponge cake. We're actually going to be rolling it up and filling it with cream cheese. This is a pumpkin uh, sponge cake, and it's kind of the same technique as doing a jelly roll, only we're not going to be putting jelly in it. The nice thing about these things is that you, there's so much flexibility. Depending on what flavors you put in the actual batter, you can make it into a chocolate sponge cake or a strawberry sponge cake or a lemon chiffon sponge cake. You can do all kinds of different things with it. But we're going to actually do a sponge cake uh, that has a pumpkin in it. And it's going to taste very traditional. Um, this uh, show is going to be aired after the holidays, but this is certainly something that could be done uh, during the holidays. But really, any time during the year, is this is just a wonderful thing that you can do. But I'm going to show you how to prep your pans. Now, the first thing is, is that you're going to need a jelly roll pan. And this is just a special size pan, about a 10 by, I think it's about a 10 by 15 or so. And it's just the right size as compared to a half sheet pan, which this is too large. But we are going to also need a half sheet pan to put this into it when we're going to be rolling it up. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I line my jelly roll pan with some aluminum foil. And I have it just large enough so that it kind of crimps around the edges without going on the underside. So it just crimps around the edges. And then I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper, and you can use wax paper if you'd like, but a piece of parchment paper, and I'm cutting it to size. And then I'm going to take a little bit of butter, and I'm going to just kind of smear it on there. And I'm going to get all the sides, make it nice and pretty. And it's going to want to come up on you if you just kind of hold it in place as you're smearing it on there, kind of brushing away from you so that it want to, wants to stay. Brushing away from the direction of, uh, away from your hand. Okay, and I'm going to get the sides really well. It's important that you do butter it very well. We're also going to flour it. Okay, woo! All right, put it right back in there. And you just want to make sure you get it all completely covered because, of course, because I'm on camera, I'm getting... All right, so now we're going to put a little flour on. You see that I have it even on a bigger sheet pan. We have all our size sheet pans uh, from our jelly roll to our half to our full right here. Um, and I'm just going to put a good amount of flour here. And this is just to flour your pan. And I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to go all around. I want to get the edges here. This is important to get the edges. And that flour will stick. And you see why I have that big pan underneath. So I'll make a big mess. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of the excess. I'm going to hold the thing and I'm just going to get rid of that excess. We don't want any excess flour there. Okay. It's kind of very traditional. You know, you can use um, you can use Pam, uh, but I find that the butter and flouring does better. And uh, so we use it that way, and, and that's, that's very traditional. The other thing that I need to do is I need to prep my pan that I'm going to be rolling the jelly roll up in. Essentially, I have a double mesh strainer. You don't have to have one this big, uh, but this has powdered sugar in it. I have a clean towel, and I'm going to take the powdered sugar. You're talking about a quarter to maybe a third of a cup or so, and you're just kind of tapping it and getting all that powdered sugar and this is going to go 
on the outside of the roll. Okay. Also keeps the towel from sticking to the roll. When we get back, we're going to mix it all together, and uh, we'll see you back in a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy, and we're going to put that sponge cake together. Now we're going to start out with our dry ingredients. The first thing that we have is uh, three quarters cup of all-purpose flour. We have a cup of sugar. We have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We have a half teaspoon of cloves. Half teaspoon of baking powder. Make sure it's baking powder. Okay. I'm just going to use my fingers there. And a half teaspoon of baking soda. Get all that out of there. Okay. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. All right. And we're going to mix that up good. The thing is, anything that has baking powder or baking soda in, you want to make sure you mix it really well and get that all evenly distributed. All right. So that's nice and even there. Okay. In another separate bowl, we're going to take two thirds cup of pumpkin puree. Now, this doesn't have any seasonings in it or anything like that. This is just pure, unadulterated pumpkin puree. All right. And then we're going to take three eggs. That's like that. Three large eggs. All right. And we're going to just take our, our whisk and we're going to mix that in there. Interesting thing is, this doesn't have any other liquid of any sort here. Okay, we're going to add our, sorry, I got the bowl in the way there. Add our flour. I'm just going to mix that in there. Now you want to really, this is a lighter whip than I really like to have, but this works. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing it here so that I can support the tines. And you see I'm coming around and going to the center that's scraping the bowl and then bringing it back down again so I get a nice even mixture. This doesn't have to be whipped though. We're just trying to get it nice and uh, well incorporated. Okay. And uh, I'm going to ask, Chef, can you get me a spatula for me, please? A rubber spatula? I have these plastic spatulas. I don't like them all that much because they don't get the sides very well. This is uh, my teaching assistant. Ryan, we're just going to pour that in that prepared pan that I showed you earlier how to do, just like that, okay. All right, now, this is key how you spread this out. Okay, you spread from the center to the corners. That's why I poured it in the center. And the reason is, is if I pull back, I'm going to pull back that flour. And I don't want to do that. So, so I want to keep it so that 
I'm not mixing any of the flour that's on the bottom in with the batter. So I'm pulling it like that, and you can see if I go like that, if I go like that, then I'm pulling off, it's like taking something that is adhesive and pulling it off the wall, okay? We don't want to do that because that's going to help it not stick later. So if I pull that off and that gets mixed in, then I won't have any non-stick area there and then it will stick. Okay, so I'm just trying to even it out and it'll even out some in the in the oven. My students and children alike talking about my children, not my students being children, are um, get a kick out of the fact that I don't finish my sentence too quickly. And I say, well, that's what you're there for, to finish my sentence. You were born for that purpose. All right. Okay, we're going to put that in the oven over here. We're at a, by the way, 375 oven, preheated. Okay, we're going to put that right in there. This is going to take about 15 minutes. And when we get back, I'm going to show you how to unload this thing and uh, roll it up. So we'll see you back in a minute. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. We are doing sponge cake, and not just any sponge cake, we are doing pumpkin sponge cake. And uh, this is going to have a cream cheese filling to it. And I'm just about to take it out of the oven. Now I'm going to tell you already that uh, from what I understand and reading the recipe that I got this off of, they don't, do, they don't use the aluminum foil. So I use the aluminum foil and it makes it much easier. Now, if you have a half sheet pan, this is better because you can go inside the lip and you do that. Now, this is going to come out real quick, so we got to go very fast. Oh, and I just messed it up just a little bit, but that's all right. I got the other ones really good, but that's all right. It comes out so fast, and I'm just going to move it over just a tiny bit. Just get a little bit of air under there, and if you just get, it's all right. Say that's what uh, cream cheese is for. Fill that up, okay? You see that I have a little bit of towel left over. I'm going to fold it over like that. I'm just going to roll it up very gently and carefully. Not too tight. Just rolling it up very carefully. And you're going to want to make the, uh, have this completely cool before you unroll it, okay? Now I have two that have been cooling. I'm actually going to let them cool for just a few minutes longer and I'll see you back in just a moment to show you how that's done. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host Chef Brett McCarthy and we're going to make the filling now. We're going to start out with eight ounces of cream cheese. All right. And really, well, I'm just going to kind of mash that up. You want to have this warm. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of softened, six tablespoons of softened butter. And I am using butter. I think butter is better in this application. Okay. And actually, I'm getting this. Um, can I get another spatula there, Chef Brian? We're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Thank you, buddy. All right. What I did, I used a too heavy of a spatula here. I'm sorry, a whisk. I don't even know my tools here. All right. I'm just going to get that and... Okay. 
And you can use a um, electric mixer. I was trying to avoid that. That that would work really well because then you could just flick the. When when I have an electric mixer, I can just raise it up, and it uh, all the excess comes off. Okay, so we're going to add a cup of powdered sugar, and uh, I'm going to put that aside. I'll get that excess later, and I'm just going to mix that up. And you can use like a KitchenAid mixer if you want with this. It's not a big deal. I was really trying to save a little bit of time here. Okay. All right, so that's uh, that's it in a nutshell, and you just get it nice and smooth. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now, if I had time, I'd take that excess cream cheese off of there and mix that into that. But that's basically what you want. All right. So now we're going to take one of the ones that uh, has been cooling, and we're going to slowly unroll it here. Okay, very gently. And this is still just a little bit warm. It takes almost an hour, hour and a half uh, to cool. I'm going to take a little bit of cream cheese here. And I made quite a big batch here. Just putting it in the center, and then we're just going to bring it all the way to the edges. And you can see I'm putting my finger there and just bringing that just like that. And don't worry if there's a few lumps in the cream cheese. It's not a big deal because this will be on the inside, and nobody will notice. It certainly won't affect the texture at all. Really this whole thing is a little bit about technique, but it does it is a little forgiving too. So if you mess up a little bit, you're all right. Okay. So I'm just going to spread that out just like that. All right? And then I'm going to just roll it back up again. And because it's cooled while it was rolled up and this is going to crack just a little bit because it's still a little bit warm hence the reason why you need to make sure that it cools okay but we're going to roll that right under there okay and at the end of the show I'm going to slice it for you and you can see what it looks like really nice and pretty okay one of the other things that we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of powdered sugar and just dust it once again just with a little bit more powdered sugar so that's it and uh, see you back in a moment. We're going to do a nice little appetizer that you can use at any time. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Britt McCarthy. We're going to be making spinacopita, which is a Greek pastry. It's usually done with phyllo dough, but because phyllo dough is so hard to work with, we're going to do it with puff pastry. It comes out really, really nice. And what I'm starting out with is a little bit of chopped onion. This is about a half of onion chopped. We're going to put a little olive oil in there. We're going to put our onions in there. I'm just going to wait for it to heat up for just a second there. I had already got my pan hot, so that's why I didn't have to wait for the oil to heat up like you normally would have to. You see how it started to cook right away. And we're just going to soften this. We don't want to really brown the onion too much. We just want to soften it. Okay. And this is the only part other than to cook your spinach. And I'm going to just explain how that is done uh, in a moment or two when I'm combining it all together. So I'm not going to show you cooking the spinach part, but it's really quite easy. Okay. 
essentially all you have to do is wilt the spinach. And again, we're just, we're just trying to soften this up a little bit. That's it. And uh, I'm going to turn that heat down just a little bit. Soften that up just a little bit. Okay. All right. And that's about it. We're just going to do that for a couple more minutes. Uh, not going to take up camera time for that, but when we get back, you're going to see how it all comes together, and we'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy. And I told you that we had some spinach that was cooked. Now this is that baby spinach that you can buy in the produce section. They come in bags ready to go. You don't have to wash it, don't have to do anything with it. All you have to do is put it in a saute pan, a little bit of water, and just wilt it down. You don't even have to cook it that much. Now you'll see that I have some uh, cheesecloth here, and that's just to get out the excess moisture. And I'm just going to squeeze all that excess moisture out. And you can see there's quite a bit. Even more than I thought. Okay, that should be good. All right, most of that. That's probably a pretty healthy beverage there too if uh, you wanted to drink that. Not. All right. Okay, so then we're gonna take our, our spinach and we're just gonna lightly chop it. Just lightly chop it across. You can see it's pretty dry there. Okay, This is actually two bags of spinach. I'd say that's probably about 12 ounces. And I'm just taking this spinach and just putting it in there. Okay, Just like that. And then I'm going to have the feta cheese. This is a cup of feta cheese. I'm putting that in there. All right. All right. And I'm going to add that onion to it. And when we get back, we're going to uh, show you this. I'm going to add the onion. The onion's actually chilling in the freezer, so I'm going to add that onion that we cooked off just a moment ago and just mix it up, and then I'm going to show you how this all comes together. So I'll see you back in a minute. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. Uh, we have our puff pastry here, and this is actually a commercial size sheet. I get it in, in, in bulk, but you can also buy this. This comes uh, made by Pepperidge Farm. They make puff pastry sheets, and they come in small slender boxes. It's in your freezer section, and very easy to uh, find, and it's puff pastry. And you can just make all kinds of things with that. It's very nice. But what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to just cut this into large rectangles. just so that it's nice and square. I'm not going to use that last little part there. Okay, And then I'm going to cut them into squares. We made about 400 of these the other night. They're very, they're pretty easy to put together especially when you have unpaid labor. Eek. All right, so now we're going to take, this is a mixture, that feta cheese, spinach, and onion. And make sure your onion is cool. Everything needs to be cool before you stuff it in here, OK? And you're going to just put about a, not even hardly a teaspoon. 
That's why I'm using just a small little spoon. It's going to come right down like that. All right. And then you're going to take your and just fold it right over. And I'm just going to Okay. And then you're just going to crimp the edges. All right. And that's easy. And that's all there is to it. Okay. Now you want to make sure you don't get any product. And you can use a fork if you want. It's not a big really big deal. Okay? And I've just lightly oiled or you can put a little release spray on a pan and uh, we're going to let these bake off. When we get back we're going to unveil our, our pumpkin roll as well as these and, uh, and that's all there is to it. So we'll just see you back in a moment. Okay, welcome back. We have our uh, Jelly roll or sponge cake, really. No jelly inside. We've got cream cheese inside. This is our pumpkin roll. And we're just going to take a little bit of powdered sugar. I'm just going to sprinkle that over there. Kind of fill in all those little spots that the towel left behind. We've got a nice pretty one right there. All right. And then we're also going to get out our little spinacopita. And they just look gorgeous. And they just have puffed up so nicely. All right. All right. So we're going to just take, and I'm just going to cut away the very edges here so I can get a nice, beautiful roll here. All right. And then I'm going to go about and, oh, I don't know. I guess that's a, almost an inch right there. And you see I'm using a serrated edge there. You'll get about six to eight servings here. Six to eight servings. All right. And we're going to put just a little bit of mint there. All right. And that just is, that's just as pretty as can be. Nice little fresh mint. Nice thing about this, this mint actually came from our garden. It is actually still growing. I'm just amazed by that. It's beautiful. Okay, so we've got our nice cream cheese filling there, and it's just a nice little spiral. It's beautiful as, any, as all get out. You could put a little bit of extra powdered sugar on there, I guess would be nice, and just go, just kind of sprinkle that around and make it look very festive. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we have our, got a little powdered sugar on my, we're just going to take our beautiful, uh, Spin a coppin and just put that right there. Actually, you know what? I just like the three going down the center. Okay. I'm going to take a little, some flat leaf parsley. Just kind of put that right around there. And that's just beautiful right like that. That's our spin a And our pumpkin sponge roll with the mint as a garnish. And uh, hey, I want to cook with you.